with just this one And there's a feeling when you look out And you ask, what can I be? And you know there's really nothing That can keep a guy from being Pat Foster in the very center of Vega, the defending champion, Little John Lombardo, Danny Ongaias, the Big John Mass Machine, Jervis Modillo, Jim Edon, Paisano Matsubara, world champion Gene Snow, Tom Ferraro, the Brad Stenberg in Vega, and Big Jim Dunn. Everybody's afraid of something, but... Uh... I think my biggest fear since I was little was fire and height. So I figured the best way to get rid of it was just join the fire department. As far as uh, funny cars go, I am uh, still get nervous at the starting line because you never know exactly what you're going to do until you do it, and sometimes it's too late. And I, I think if you lost all your fear and respect, you just quit being fun and you get hurt. And you, you just got to respect them, that's all there is to it. Because you just never know what they're going to do. But, uh, why worry about death if it comes sooner or later? And here's a treat. Next up to qualify is Jim Dunn in the friend setting of rear engine Plymouth Barracuda funny car. In the starting gate, the green light is on, and Dunn is underway down the quarter mile in his qualifying attempt. Looks like Dunn's got a good one cooking. Wait a minute, something goes off the car. Dunn blows the hop off the car. Four elapsed time. Only two hours to funny car eliminations. Incidentally, fans might want to check out the frantic pit work by Jim Dunn's crew as they are taping together the body on his funny car so he can be in the first the round. The hood went down and ripped the bolts right out from under the windshield. And the air got under it and peeled it right off the top. So you're just going to have to stiffen the hood and something which we hadn't counted on. I got a good crew and they're over there working up off rivet, put silver tape on it. We'll try to make it. I'm one of the older drivers out there, but uh, most of your good drivers are probably in their late 30s, early 30s. 
and right now, just in the last two or three years, the young kids are starting to come in, which is good. Attention to funny car drivers, only one hour to funny car eliminations. The staging lanes are open. We got a rear engine car, and it's a sort of a prototype right now. There's only three of them running, and uh, we're having a little bit of bad luck right here, but I think the other two are having a little worse luck than we are. Drag racing is simply two cars racing down a quarter of a mile. You know. The burnout, you do simply get your tires hot, give the crowd a little show. The tree comes down, you can go when it turns green. If you're too thin, it turns red, and you lose. Steve Burn is in the starting gate. The R's are up. He's underway. Oh, a gigantic wheel stand by Burn, the super chief. He sets her down. Here's the go, right? The car is out of control. Hold on. Burn is in the... I've been married to Pat for 17 years. I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say I, I didn't worry, but you really can't worry that much. And Jim's proved to me over the years that he's very safety conscious about things. And uh, he's very good about it. When someone is killed on the drag strip, I don't really connect it with Jim. You feel bad about it, but uh, if, I, if I let everything get to me, I, I could go nuts after a while. Funny car is just a plastic body that they've taken off of a regular production car and you put it on just a, basically a short dragster frame with a dragster engine in it. Uh, a total deal just to go out and buy it with the trailer equipment, tow truck and everything. You're, you're talking about an honest $35,000, $40,000. Where I was lucky to start when it was cheaper and I just kept racing as it went and I've kept up on the money deal that way. Half hour till 20 car elimination. You should be in the staging lane. And here's good news for all you fans. Big Jim Dunn has repaired his top of the Barracuda. He will be in the first round of elimination. And I'm known as a lever. I'll usually guess on the lights. And I'll anticipate and try to get out on them. They'll give me a tenth of a second, which I can do because it's, I'm not a paid driver. A paid driver is very bad if you red lights. Well, my crew says we don't red light twice a year. We're not trying hard enough. So we will take a chance if we're down. If we get sets are tonight or any other night. I'll leave on him because I know he can beat me fair, so i got to try to cheat. And the only way we can cheat, honestly, is to anticipate the light. And that's just an honest gamble. Pat Foster in the very center of Vegas, setting low elapsed time at 6.64 seconds. Setzer and Foster, of course, hold the track record at a 6.52 elapsed time. They also hold the distinction of being the quickest funny car in the sport at 6.40 seconds. In this race, it'll be Gary Bergen, the Braskin at Bergen Vega, and Gary Detchum, the Detchum and Walker at Ford Pinto. They're all set. There they go. They're side by side. Bergen falls back. It's Gary Detchum in an upset at 7.21 seconds. In the next pairing, it's the Setzer Vega, driven by Pat Foster against Jervis O'Neill, the King Rat, Chevy Camaro. They're both staged up. The green light. They leave side by side. O'Neill on who's control the King Rat. Foster at 6.47 elapsed time. Now it's the colorful Zeus Montsamar, the Paisano Montsamar Vega. And there goes Montsamar on his burnout. His opponent will be world champion Gene Snow from Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, this is going to be a good race. Montsamar against Snow. They're both ready to go. Snow clicks off a 6.68 for the win. Top speed of the event at 222 miles per hour. The next race will pit the KG veteran Jim Dunn, who has gone to the semifinal. He has drawn at a Pete Everett's Little Demon. This is the second half of the semi-final race. The winner of this will go into the final against the awesome Barry Sister Vega driven by Pat Foster. The world's greatest in the past is funny.
lapse time, speed of 194.80 miles per hour. It's Jim Dunn into the final against Pat Foster, the Barry Setzer Vega for the Funny Car 500 title. They call us the budget racers, mainly because we can't uh, buy a pink motor or a black engine. So we build our own motors and we do all our own mechanical work that we can. Yeah, I've got a very good crew here. They don't get paid anything. The main thing, they really enjoy racing, so they're very good on the crew. My family gets involved quite a bit. Like my son there is my number one pit crew, and my daughters help pack the chutes and pour the oil when we go out. My wife, she pours the bleach and helps line us up. Last year we went back east, we went through 23 states, raced 18 times. We were gone five weeks, and that's what I called a vacation. Qualifying. He's mowed down three opponents. He is in the final, and he'll be going against Pat Foster in the Austin Barry says the Vega that holds OET at a 6.47 lap time. Actually, what we're doing now is warming up the starting line with the torch. We do this before the final. There's no liquid down, no reason to be alarmed. We're doing this to give the driver and their crew members the best chance to launch their car in this all-important final. It's just to warm the starting line. It's the combination, of course, to launch these cars. It's two things. It's the heat, the stickiness of the tires, and, of course, the heat itself of the track. Before we enter the all-important final, a real credit to Jim Dunn and his crew for their frantic pit work as three hours ago, his car... Last was round, we have a saying that we usually use that uh, we're going to put the motor on kill. When we say put the motor on kill, it means we're putting in as much nitro or a little more than we know it could possibly use and if we're wrong it's going to explode and that's why we call him a little seven second hand grenade and he'll be using all his canniness everything he has is savvy to get by pat foster to leave first the starting line and hold it off before they reach the finish jim dunn's experimental rear engine barracuda is designed of course to lead hard on the starting line he left very hard he's held his opponent off he's been able to shut off early speeds 190 miles an hour or so and therefore defeat his opponents. This is what we can look for in the final against Pat Foster. He'll be done at trying to leave first and trying to hold off the Vega to the finish line. So we're now first of all in the right hand lane by Pat Foster and the very center of Vega. Vega sets them on fire as he warms the rear tires. This is it for the all important final at this the second annual Hang 10 of 20 car 500. In the tower lane now the burnout by Jim Dunn. Oh, Dunn just smokes them all the way down the track to the three-quarter mark, putting on quite a show in this final race. Quite a feat for the fireman from Monterata, Jim Dunn, that he's even in this final. He backs up his Barracuda, as three hours ago, this car was a convertible. He blew the top off in qualifying, and here he is in the final. A lot of guys like to play football, baseball, or something, but uh, even when I was little, I'd, I'd like to go racing now. When I was very small, my dad, he liked horses, and he had me a horse, and we lived out in the dairy, and he wanted me to work there, but uh, I told him I didn't want nothing to do with that act, so my dad says, well, what do you want to do? I says, I want to go racing. So he says, for my 16th birthday, he bought me a 40 Ford, and a cam, two carburetors, and about 50 bucks worth of tools, and said, there you go. And I've been racing ever since. We got competitive about oh, 1963 and 64. We started racing with the Aldred here. It was done Merritt Velasco Coupe. We ran it for two years, won the Winter Nationals both years. Then we went dragsters, Henry and I, and it uh, didn't turn out too well. I wanted to go Chrysler. He didn't want to. He was a racer when we met and uh, when I married him, and he still is. So I've got a new partner named Yates. We went dragster racing. We were low ET at Riverside third week out for the hot rod manufacturers meet and had a quit and then I went down and saw a wreath on a motive and uh, he said I'll give you a motor if you want to run a car and I had a brand new car then it didn't do too well it had an experimental woody front end on it he's easy to get along with and he's a good sport and uh, then we got a new car we got the rainbow car they called it and uh, we won Bakersfield that year for the fuel championship in 69. We won Division 7, 69. Now, if he didn't race, I wouldn't want to go out because it would be so boring. And we went to the funny car, the Dun and Reef funny car. We won Bakersfield again in 71 with the funny car. 
I believe that do what you want to do now and worry about being old when you're old. I can't see saving my money. I do what I want to do today and worry about tomorrow. So I guess you could say I live day by day rather than what will I be doing 30 years from now. After he built a funny car, he just started winning a lot. And the model company came on to build models, make models, though. Dad said, sure. And they were just, you know, they were going to give him some money, but, he, you know, he didn't really care about the money, and they ended up giving him 1.5% plus $500. Used to, if you had $1,000, you could be 80% of the guys because they only had $500. Now everybody's got their thousand dollars. Now you go out there and you got the factories behind them and everything. So you're you're beating a bigger factory now. It's a bigger thing. It actually gives you more satisfaction when you can beat one because it is harder and it's more competitive than it used to. Here's a special trophy for red light and then the hand. <laughs> 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 one of a kind. Neato, right? Why did you red light? Why did I red light? Because the light was too slow. <laughs> I was perfect. Every driver here in all must win to earn those valuable points to lead them to the World Championship Series final at Orange County International Raceway on September 16th. The winner there. I can't believe it, man. We got robbed last night. Like we're laying there in bed, and I got my bill full by the TV, and the kids got his pants lying there. Get up this morning, both our billfolds are empty. I mean, that guy had a little hair to come in with five of us sleeping in there. I didn't even find out about that. I went in and got a glass of orange juice today and had to borrow some money from a buddy. Yeah, yeah. I just really started doing stuff last year when we went on tour. It was really fun because we it was just me, my mom, my sisters. We were the crew, so to speak, and my dad was driving. I feel close to my dad because I always go with him. Coming up in qualifying right now is the brand new Sophie sales car owned by Larry Huff. Dave Beebe, one of the finest drivers of funny cars in the country, is at the wheel. He's pulling into the bleach box right now with his new Challenger funny car. He's getting ready for his burnout, and here he comes. Dave Beebe out of the bleach box. He'll be backing the car up, and Dave Beebe now getting ready to make his qualifying attempt. Thus far for funny cars in Sacramento, 213 miles an hour. Corey Asvito now. The funny car the drummer goes through. He runs in the elapsed time of 7.67 seconds. Here goes his burnout. A strong, smoky burnout by Jim Dunn taking those tires. Backing up into his own tracks to provide the best traction. Dunn now approaches the starting line. Dunn goes sideways, he gets it straight, he keeps on through it. Uh oh, it looks like he may have hit the piston about halfway down. He still has 7.31 seconds, enough to qualify into this funny car eliminator program at Sacramento Raceway Park. It uh, took all the rings and it's oiling. When it gets oiled, the fuel we run will detonate real hard. We'll go back. We'll go back into the race. You know, just hope for luck that we can luck through. It'll probably run 720, which is fair. That's not even fair. That's pretty bad. But it'll, rather than just going home, we'll try. Qualifying in top fuel eliminator for those all-important World Championship Series points here at Sacramento. We have two cars attempting to qualify into that 16-car field in competition eliminator. Funny car qualifying continues. First up is Benjamin Walker. And a 7.51 second lap time puts him in the program. So it's 0.97 seconds. That really puts him in the program. Coming in trailing with a 7.96 seconds. It looks like from here to be getting the fire out of the car. 
Good driver. McFarland's car coming to a wrap clear at the end of this quarter mile. McFarland, we have word from the finish line, got a little bit singed, but is in good shape. The first race of the first round of Funny Car Eliminator at this World Championship Series event at Sacramento Raceway Park fits the only two rear-engine funny cars in the world and breaks of brakes for Dave Mata, who has to be the underdog. They meet in the first round side by side. Davey Mata with a brand new car and it looks a little bit different as the body is set down very low over the car and Jim does a lot of run of most respected in funny car racing throughout the entire United States. He drives that rear engine Barracuda, and certainly one of the toughest in the country. Both cars heading now towards the starting line. The three comes down, they're both on fire. He's done with a big lead. He's on a heavy problem. He's got it down in the middle of the course. He's done go through for the last time of 6.98 seconds at 195 miles an hour. Davey Mata trailing with a slowing 136 miles an hour at 8.31 seconds. Jim Dunn winning the first race, moving on to round number two and the all-important World Championship Series point. He's probably one of the best drivers out there as far as I'm concerned. He's not 12-headed enough, but he's the kind of driver that after the race, we all go out and party together, have a good time. He's got a very short temper, but it doesn't last that long. You know, he, uh, He's mad enough to five minutes later to figure out about what, what made him mad and uh, back to the same old. Yeah, I figure I'll drive for another three or four more years. Uh, tuning the motors, getting chances to work, that's the hardest part. So uh, I'll probably just go into helping the kid get his car to run. He'll be the driver and I'll just go into the background. I haven't really decided what I'd like to do with my life yet. I'm, I'd like to get into drag racing, but I feel I should have some other thing to do in case I don't make it. I've been thinking of uh, taking a class next year in accounting. like Jim Dunn's forgot his goggles. A very sharp crewman tells him to put him down, and there goes Dunn now into the staging beam. Both cars leave the line very close, side by side. A little bit of haze smoke coming off the tires of Sushi Matsubara. It's Jim Dunn for the win into the final of 7-11, 188.29 miles an hour, losing 7-12, a tremendous 210 top-end charge by Sushi Matsubara. just got word from the pit, it's a broken two-speed for Jim Dunn, Dave Beebe the automatic winner, a tough break for Dunn and the rear engine Barracuda. I miss Jim the most when he's at the fire station. Yeah, I've been on a fire department about nine years. I had a job's very good, you got good guys to work with and you never know what's going to happen. Maybe we'll have a fire today, maybe we won't. It works the worst part because there's just no way of getting home then. I mean, 
if you're out racing, like I said, it's more of a family affair. At work, you're gone for 24 hours, and you're gone, uh, one third of my life we're at work. That's probably the most lonesome time. If I could probably do better right now, say driving to the race car, and I could in the fire department, but uh, you have good security, and I got a family with three kids. Like I said, I'm a professional hobbyist. That's the way we look at it. And uh, I get a race enough where I'm satisfied, and I still got a good enough job that keeps my wife happy. I was, uh, I should say, scared of heights. Just, you know, I mean, literally, scared of getting on top of a coffee table, even. And uh, to get on the job, the first time I failed the physical agility, which consists of going up five stories up a ladder truck and, and then down and everything. I went up it and down it, and the guy, guy got down the end. The guy says, boy, I'm sorry, Mr. Dunn, you failed. And I said, man, I'm happy I went up and down it. You know, I thought, man, you had to pull me down. Two. The only thing that really troubles me is his uh, temper. He's got kind of a bad temper, and so do I, and sometimes we kind of get into it. If he's wrong about it, he will apologize. I learned from my father to be a good loser. Like you said, sometimes you gotta win, sometimes you gotta lose. Jim's a very good dancer, but he won't dance. keep something going. I mean, if you like each other and have fun or whatever you do, it goes. It's like anything else. If it's gels, it gels, but we try to do things together. The most important thing I can do to my family is just make sure, try to keep them healthy and give them enough to eat and clothes and see if they have a good time, give them an education. And they'll have to do what they want to do themselves. My happiest uh, memory of my wife, it have to be yesterday or a minute ago. There's a feeling when you speak up And you say, give me a try And you know that though it's new to you You've got the kind of heart and what it takes To make it fly
dust storms, a little bit of rain here at Salt Lake City, Utah. The World Championship Series will resume as soon as the weather permits. Well, we're stopped here, ladies and gentlemen, for a moment. Okay, yeah, the dust is pretty bad, but uh, I've been racing about 20 years. And 20 years I've been running on the streets. I've been running out in Dad's cow pasture. and been in it ever since high school. and. Uh, I've seen worse things than this. I mean, I won't run in it now because we're going too fast right now. I mean, 20 years ago, I've been going about 80 miles an hour as fast as I could go. So I don't think you'd really hurt it because about now I'll be doing 80 when I come out of a burnout. 20 years. 20 years is a long time. say Sush and Paisano, McEwen. There, there's quite a few over the years you have to know them, but there's a, just a bunch of drivers. We just know each other at the racetrack, and when I'm at home, we never talk to each other. I don't really get worried because he's a pretty good driver. He's been driving for 20 years. From Denver, Colorado, Sush Matsubaro, the Paisano Matsubaro team out of Los Angeles. Big Jim Dunn and the Dunn and Reese car. Also, other top machines competing for a great amount of cash and awards at Salt Lake City.
come towards the starting line. Dunn, a big favorite here with the fans at Bonneville Racetrack. It's a different altitude than he's used to working on. He's fired up. And he thunders down the quarter mile. He's making a fantastic run. A very good qualifying run for Big Jim Dunn. A six. 0.85 seconds, 6.85, a new Bonneville track record. Last year when we started, uh, everybody had three-speed transmissions. They weighed about 2,500 pounds, and they thought that was the answer. And uh, we got together and said, they're all wrong, you know. So we built a lightweight one and made as much like a drag as we could, high gear and everything. And uh, we were the winningest car on the West Coast. So this year we figured, well, let's go one step more. So we built the rear engine and uh, been giving us nothing but a headache. But um, we're starting to get the combination and it must be working because we've got the track record here tonight. that he not race. Sometimes I think I'd like him to race a little less, only because he's not home as much as I'd like him to be. Sabara up against Bob Pickett. Bob Pickett, the last time, 6.98 seconds. And now in the second half of the second matching up with John Decker. Decker driving the assassination car. He knows his way around here at high altitude. Salt Lake, some 4,000 feet high. Denver a little higher than that. He has the advantage. Jim Dunn now staging up. They both leave the line, but it's Dunn with the advantage. And he takes the race. We broke the track record here and almost set a national record because of the altitude difference. They give a 5% cushion at this altitude. But it's a little bit, we have to run a little bit quicker than what we think right now, so we're not going to try to back it up rather than hurt the motor to save it for the elimination. All right, we're now getting ready for the final. It's that KG Jim Dunn and his Barracuda up against Pete Everett's Little Demon. Bob Pickett doing the driving. This will be the final run of the points meet. All the gold on the line. All the marbles up for grabs. In the background, you can see Jim Dunn getting into that rear engine car. A lot of points at stake here, and Big Jim needs those points. Now we're getting ready for the burnouts, and you can see Jim Dunn's body high in the air, the plastic-bodied replica of Detroit Iron. Reith Automotive, we used to race with him, and Reith's been a racer for many years. He was 
racing before I was even. He was on the lake beds. He used to go out there. And uh, he picks up a car. It was sort of a friendship type deal where my original partner, Yates, he got married, so he wanted out. So I had a car and didn't have an engine. And he says, well, come on over and I'll give you an engine. So that was oh, probably eight years ago. He's still giving me engines. No, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy in turn pays for all, most of his parts, and we just sell them at cost basis. And we do most of the machine work. And as far as experimental and test parts, Jimmy tests them for us. He's been one of my major sponsors, and uh, we've gotten along good. Well, you have to get along good to go for eight or ten years being together like this here. Like I said, he gives me the shop, the truck, all the machine work. No, Jim's good people. If he wasn't good people, we would be looking for a new, <laughs> somebody else new. I mean, we might need a nice younger driver and all. When you, when you get old and bald like Jim, what are you going to do? That's what I got my kids for. But you know what they say? They say there's old drivers and there's bold drivers, and you don't find too many bold old drivers. So, so for that long, length of thought, I mean, Jimmy and I have a very happy relationship. This summer's been a lousy year for me. I've had a lot of fun, but the year, the year before was an exceptional year. We won quite a few races. We were probably one of the top cars on the West Coast. Out here, we won more than anybody. But you don't like to be a loser. It's fun to work on something new once in a while, but you should get results. And we just weren't getting the results. And we, it was telling on us, because we were ready to cut the car up. We were ready to go back, back to a conventional car. And uh, then it started respawning. We all got rejuvenated again. Now we're ready to work on it. It'd be easy if there was a common problem, but there's never a common problem. Like today, we put a new Ford rear end in it. It's $1,100 unit just for the third member and the housing. It's been tied up for two weeks getting it. The frame's been painted, sandblasted, all different mounts in and everything. Days the day before the race, we slipped, got our axles last night, got bearings pressed on this morning. Come down, put the axles in, they're each an inch too short. So they say, well, you can get to fix that if you go to Ontario and pick up this other hub. So, okay, so we tear the rear end apart, I make it to Ontario, come back, and that one doesn't work either. So now we're putting back the rear end that we spent $1,200 to take out. The kid I sold my old car to last week, it's Mike Dixry. I hope he knows there's more to it than just getting in and driving it, because he's going out to get his driver's license today. Show me how to build a motor and how to run a car, how to set everything, how to mix the nitro. He showed me. I didn't know anything when I started. I think I know now he showed me. He's trying. He's going to have a hard time. I told him it's going to cost you at least $2,000 to learn just in broken parts and stuff. And uh, Maybe you'll make it, maybe you won't. Right now he's down to seven fifty, dollars which when you consider he just stepped out of a Volkswagen and stepped into a fueler, I think he's doing pretty good. He's not scared of the car. He does what we tell him. We tell him not to overextend yourself to learn what the car is like, and he does. Everybody's laughing at him, sort of, because he's made maybe 14 runs. But he's down to a 750. He hasn't crashed it. He hasn't broken anything but a rear end. And uh, I think that's very good for a beginner. Well, the first run, he went about three feet. Second run, he went about four feet. The next run, he went about 12 feet off the line. You know, I said, hey, what's the matter? You know, he just said, I think he's going to the left. I said, well, it looks good. You know, what's the matter this time? I, I think it was right. And I said, okay, you know, don't push it, because, you know, you feel bad. You tell a guy, well, you know, you're stupid. Go all the way through, and he kills himself. In order to get your license, you're required to make so many runs for a car. You got to make at least six. You got to make uh, one-eighth mile, two moderate, one more moderate, and uh, two full. And you make those, and after you make those, and two full, and you get your license, you have to make two full if the thing's good enough. You know, it's a good old car. The last time I drove it was a week before I sold to him, and uh, it went at 685, so he'll do it pretty Mike quick. Dietrich is from a Barracuda funny car, needing a 715 or better to get his NHRA AA funny car license. They're up by Diedrich, showing a lot of smoke for the rear tires, getting them rear tires good and warm. Diedrich backing up, just about set to go now. He's in the starting gate. The green light comes on, and Diedrich on a good run. He needs a 715 or better. He makes it for his NHRA driver's license. I have often walked this road before So many times But alone the road was lonely Alone I thought I'd all All the light, the love can't help but grow. A 
light that cannot help but show. Featuring the finest names in funny car racing. The entries include the Who's Who of Drag Racing, the Shy Down Hustler, the Blue Max, Jerry Setzer's Vega, Don Perdome, Tom McEwen. Virtually every name of the finest names in the sport of funny car racing. They'll all race three rounds in round robin style racing at the Funny Car Team Championships. The two quickest elapsed times will go in the final for the individual funny car champion. Well, we've both been racing a long time. Uh, we both started out with double-A fuel haulers. He went to dragsters. We got into funny cars. I guess we're both pretty ornery, so we're, we just get along real good. You, you know he's a really a good racer, so, you know, that brings out the competitive spirit because the fact that if we lose, we have to take a lot of harassment afterwards, so we always try extra hard when we race. Most of the time, you know, like our parts are his, his parts, we can borrow, uh, we help each other whenever we can. There's no problem there. Oh, he's a great guy. You just, you know, you if you understand him and everything, and, and you know that if you do bad, the harassment's gonna come, and if he does bad, he expects the same from you, and you know, we get along real fine. He was doing a lot of experimenting uh, with the rear engine car, and you know, like nobody else is venturing to try it out on a full-scale basis like he is. I think, but everything's coming around now where, you know, it's starting to justify for him holding out and trying it for this long. Why do you like drag racing? No, it's fun. It's the best. Volkswagens, but they're not here. Because <laughs> it's really bitching. Fun to watch. So I meet a lot of people. I like to listen to the engines. It's like racing. <laughs> I like the noise. See the girls. Noise. <laughs> far out, just far out. Noise. <laughs> it's thrilling. <laughs> oh, it's just really exciting. I like to see cars win each other. Well, my responsibility as a starter is to make sure that the cars are safe and they're not leaking any fuel, not leaking any oil. The car is safe to travel down the quarter mile and when it's over and the driver has a shootout or unbuckles a seatbelt, whatever, that he's safe and the car is safe and there's no problems. Jim Dunn, uh, Jim has a exceptionally good starting line reaction time plus the fact that Jim's car seems to launch or leave the starting line uh, quite a bit quicker than the average car being that it's a straight clutch car. Normally with this super quick reaction and super quick launch off the starting line with this car he'll win quite a few races. This is a brand new car, the Setzer machine driven by Foster. Jervis O'Neill set in the tower side, Foster set in the spectator. Setzer's got the lead, Pat Foster in the brand new Vega. Jervis O'Neill's on fire. He hits the bottle while Pat Foster goes on to low elapsed time of 6.59 seconds. There's a red light on the track. The emergency crew rolls to the aid of Jervis O'Neill. The number five qualifier for the four team, John Collins. Next, the number two qualifier, Dwayne Ong. The number one qualifier for the four team, Richard Tharp and the Blue Max. Next, we have little John Lombardo. And next, we have Jeff Cordy. Then Dave Beebe, Whipple and Mr. Ed. Jim Murphy, the Holy Smokes. Next, we have Jungle Jim Lieberman and Gary Bergen, the Brasket and Bergen Vega. The Dodge team led by the Chi-Town Hustler and Ron Colson and Big Jim Dunn from La Mirada, California, number two qualifier for the Plymouth team. And the Hawaiian, number two, driven by Leroy Chatterton, a 6.78 elapsed time. Sush Matsubara for Paisano Matsubara, number two, Pat Foster, the very Setzer Vega at a 6.59.
Langford, Will Gogan, Ed McCullough, and the Revolution and Don Beeman. The burnout by McCullough. They're both set to go with green light. It's a hole shot by Langford. Backing up Quick Ziggler's Plymouth, that'll be facing the dodge of Ray Alley. There they go. Quick Ziggler, a little crossed up. Jumbo Jim Lieberman being backed up in the right hand lane in his Chevy Vega. Gary Denchum is already back with Walker and Denchum with Ford in the middle. Lieberman moves forward now to Chevy Vega. The flames is pulsing out of the headers. You can see the flames hovering about five to six feet in the air as Lieberman is just about set to go. Alongside of him, Denchum and that Ford over in the left-hand lane. Both RPMs are up now. The green is on, and they're set to go the other way now. Jumbo Jim out first. It'll be Jim Lieberman all the way to 6.69 elapsed time. It's little John Lombardo for the Chevrolet team and Mike Halliburton. shoots of sparks, but he still holds on for the victory at 7.27 seconds. here by Gary Watson is Paddy Wagon Wheel Stander. Watson underway, the front wheels are up, the sparks are the rear end, and Watson making his way down the quarter mile. Gary Watson, the entire quarter mile with a shower of sparks. Quite an exhibition. It's Cheryl Greer, 14, flies on all Matsumara for the Chevy team. Matsumara will be in the tower side. They're in the stage lights, they're all set. That's a third car Paisano, you know, he's piled up. When you're racing, you overextend yourself. That's probably the most hazardous time for a driver. Now that's the one, he sheared all the lug nuts off. I mean, that's an act of God. There's no way you're going to fix that. He's just lucky he didn't get uh, hurt, you know. And he's very good for crashing three times and flipping twice, and uh, he doesn't seem to get scared a bit. So, I mean, he's sure not afraid of it. That exhibition by Richard Schroeder in his Dodge Challenger. The wheels are off in Schroeder's machine. The sparks are flying. He goes the entire quarter mile on two wheels. Okay, the quickest two last time still remain. Billy really Meyer is 651 and Ron Wilson is 657. But that could change right here. And Jim Dunn is going to burn out the great direction. And I Dunn and Wayne on the great Ray Mustang. Jim Dunn, the crew members out there assisting him and pushing him back as far as money is here. In contrast, Wayne on back this machine up with the aid of the reverser for Mustang. They're both set to go now. They're staged up in the green light. It's the wire that Jim Dunn moved first. Wayne Ong has broken something, and the Mustang has done and streaks down the quarter mile to a 684 victory. It's Dan. 
Antioch ISP, 675 victory. Some drivers are lucky, you know, and some aren't. Like uh, the guy saying for me that I'm a, one of the luckiest unlucky guys there is because if I lose a race or the motor dies at the start line, I shut it off early, I don't know why, and we'll come home and uh, Rod will be hanging loose, the rear end's ready to fall out, uh, and that's just being very lucky when you're unlucky.
moving down the track in that parade. A total purse of, that is a big purse of $130,000 in prize money. Add to that another $100,000 in contingency prizes, and we have some kind of drag race here at Tulsa. Next up in this great parade of championship cars, Jim Dunn and his fine crew from California. This car was a winner at the big Bakersfield meet. He's one of the perennial champions out from California. Of course, great excitement here. We have spectators from all over the country, young people, old people, everybody excited about the great event here at Tulsa. sponsors races because we're sponsored very good over the year by Goodyear and Valvoline, all our clutch people. You know, everybody's on our car, but they won us at three big major events out of the year just for the odds. And we know we're going to lose money. I mean, it costs us a thousand dollars just to get here and run our car. And if we qualify, we get five hundred dollars, and half of us are going to lose first round. But uh, we feel it's money ahead in the long run. Wind's Courage of Australia is a rocket-powered dragster. It decomposes hydrogen peroxide. That's how we uh, get our thrust. The car is 27 and a half feet long. It weighs 890 pounds, and the car has turned uh, 311 in 5.10 seconds.
triple accident. Larry Brown tosses the motor completely out of Bob Dumont's digger. And incredibly, just as incredibly, Larry Brown walks away unhurt. Mr. Ed and Whipple Car from Fresno. Billy Holt, the winner, Whipple, and Mr. Ed, Dave Beebe driving with a 6.89. Dun and Reed, that rear engine Barracuda, the only one in Tulsa, being pulled now into the fire-up area, while Telstar is making his smoky burnout. the best you can get you work on it as hard as you can and uh, it, it just uh, it's a bummer when it breaks because i mean here we come a thousand miles you spend money and uh, it's so great you know you're going to spend money but you don't come to break same you come to get beat i mean there's 60 other losers out here and we're all mad but at least the other 15 probably got beat i mean to me when something breaks you don't get beat it's just uh it's just a bummer and that's all there is to it the only good thing about drag racing I really enjoy, I mean, it's instant. Uh, you hear, when the tree goes off, seven seconds later, you know, you're either a winner or a loser, and boy, there's a winner, and there's a lot of losers everywhere. Else. I first got into bike racing when I read in the paper that they were going to have one at the shopping center. At the time we were just racing in the street so I figured I had a pretty good chance and it was better than just racing in the street because they had a full Christmas tree and everything. So I went out there and I made my first run and I crashed and broke my handlebars and everybody was laughing at me. So I got mad and went home and got a new pair of handlebars and came back and set low ET. And then they weren't laughing too much anymore. At that race, I ended up getting second place because a guy beat me out by just about a foot. Uh, they had a special light system where you could cut the light, and he knew about it, and I didn't. So he left on me, and he ran his best time at 666, and I just couldn't catch him. After that, I got it figured out how to do it and started winning more races. Well, my concern about 
my kids now is that they become responsible adults and enjoy their life. And stopping the clock with a 7.22. Weedy race time, Frank Dato. All right, looks like we have another race coming up here. Done in the right lane and down they go. It's going to be closer right down to the finish line. Really cranking it on. And it looks like it is done right across the line. He left time for him. 5.89. 5.89. Now we've got a special exhibition run by Frank Dato on his specially dismantled bicycle. The front wheel has been taken off and down he goes, giving us an exhibition run to the finish line, in and out the cones, Mr. Frank Dato. I might want to be a finning car driver when I grow up and try it. I might want to be it. Because like Cha Cha Medani, I want to try to be, you know, better and be like the fastest finning car girl. The next uh, racer to come up will be Patty Dunn. Okay, on the line is Patty Dunn going down for her qualifying run. Now to the finish line, let's see what she does. Patty Dunn, the fastest qualifier in the girls division for the 722. All right, it looks like Mark Servi in the left lane. Going down for his qualifying run. Mark Servi ready, cranking it on, giving it all he's got. give out our prizes and our trophies to the trophy winners here today. We have Mr. Alfonso from the bike shop across the way, and he's got some prizes to give out. He's got a bicycle racing hat for Mike Dunn, the top eliminator. That'll keep the hair out of your eyes, Mike. And along with that, we have our first place trophy. So congratulations to you. You've done a fantastic job. 5.89 seconds. <laughs> Here today at Orange County International Raceway, you'll see the Division 7 of Point Speed Final. This, of course, the all-important race. It's the end of the trail for the WCS racers. Today, here at this event, the final chance for them to gain points at an all-important berth at the World Finals. This is the final point speed right here at Orange County Raceway. Staged up. Jolie qualifies at a 6.81 elapsed time. Track's got me a little spooked because uh, you know, we went out and smoked the first run and didn't prove anything. And last night we came back and went up to smoke again. So I lifted out, out of it and I got her straight. When I got down her about 800 foot mark, she just turned left, you know, for no reason. Usually the car will wander when you're coming down here, but they're not supposed to turn left. But the battle in top fuel, I'm sure you'll find highly contested. And it's Barracuda. The late model heavy power plant just pulsing it away as Dunn comes up to the stage beam. 
Dunn now all set. Remember, he's run on the tower side. He has not yet qualified. is not quite good enough to qualify. When he comes in loose, he's, you know it's a shot day, he's not going to do a hell of a lot. But when the old man comes in the gate upset, mad at the people at the gate, and uh, that's when the old man gets comes on. And like this last run, when uh, you know all day long we've been kind of lax and everything, all of a sudden the chips are down, we've got to make a pass. When he's really tight and he's really got to make a move, and then that's when he's going to do it. Sometimes it's better thinking things over, waiting at the end of. gets on out there a little further and it starts heading for the lights and they had to pull a chute and get it off the strip because you know I'm going to take the lights down and they sprayed the strip and it's just it's just not holding it in the middle I mean there's no no traction here we, we keep taking clutch out of it and we're, we're hoping to slip the clutch more because we don't want the tires to break loose and we've got to slip the clutch more and if it works out you know we should get a fairly decent run but uh, this is our, you know, this is our last chance to qualify today, so I mean, we gotta do something. Dean McCall is number seven at a 684. This is the time to sweat it out because neither of these drivers are in the program. And Anna's spark of interest here is that Montemara, Jim Dunn, and Dave Beebe are all three tied for the division title for the Funny Car Points lead. Beebe already qualified. If these two cars fail to qualify now, it'll be all over as Beebe will probably win the division. This is especially important for Big Jim Dunn because Dunn has been working all summer with this experimental Plymouth Barracuda, a car that led to victory at Salt Lake City with a points championship, but has broken down in Tulsa and blew a top in the Hang 10 20 car 500 and broke a two-speed at the Sacramento points meet. Can Big Jim Dunn, who's had such a tough summer, come back and win his division crown? We'll see here today. and a 684 are the two numbers they're shooting at. Sush Matsabara has had his ups and downs over the years, and really, it's all on the line for him now. It's all on the line also for Jim Dunn because he's got to make this qualification to go into the points championship. His crew is pushing it back. You can well imagine the tension of this man, a man who's gone from a good year with a front engine machine to this new rear experimental Plymouth Barracuda. Jim Dunn, a winner of the last points meet in the right hand lane, can also win the division if he wins here tonight. Oh my, these guys you can plainly see are really loaded for bear.
position. Sush Matsumura, meanwhile, does not make the program. Best thing that happened to me, uh, <laughs> rather than getting rich, uh, I'm pretty well satisfied as it is. I got a good job, I got a good family, and I got a good hobby. I think the most fun I think that I've had in drag racing is when I've been able to help on the car itself. Incidentally, this race here, before we get into eliminations on this beautiful uh, shirt sleeve type evening here in Southern California, will be the final summer race here at Orange County Raceway, and it will be the Division 7 points meet final. And what a race this should be. We move now to the first race of this first round of Funny Car Eliminator. And what a chance right here for Jim Dunn to further his ambition of being the Division 7 points champion. It'll be Jim Dunn up against Smokey Joe Lee from San Diego, California. Dunn, of course, the La Mirada fireman driving that rear engine funny car, one of the very few rear engine cars in the country today in Funny Car Eliminator, and certainly the most successful rear engine car that has ever been built. Jim Dunn and Dave Beebe are tied for the points lead at the moment. The man that goes the farthest in competition tonight is the man that will take home the title, the champion of Funny Car Eliminator in Division 7. He's worked all year for this chance. We're down to the final race tonight, and this is where it's all on the line. It's either do or don't tonight. I want to have any other father. Made it through the qualifying. Worked like hell to keep me firing. Then I fought my way to stage and for that final quarter mile. Yeah, I finally made the final. But I know it's never final. Three men coming this way. 
Three? What are they, Hag? Is that all you've seen? Well, three is all I've seen. A little thicker than old Posse. Boys, I want you to meet uh, Otis, Byrne, and uh, West. West. These uh, men's are gonna bed down for the night. Maybe you want to try and bring them in, huh, West? Maybe you do, Byrne. <laughs> they know we ain't no Carl Hammonds. I'd have picked them off original. They don't want no trouble. Going to Waco's all they are. You'd think them fools would have been... Out. between here and the Narrows, and they're either not coming out or got over. What do you want with us? Nothing. Just don't want no trouble. Listen, mister, we didn't do nothing. I'm going out and look at the horses. I understand how you feel. And I don't blame you. We ain't outlaws. We ain't. We just sit tight a couple of hours. And then we'll be gone. Don't make no trouble. Is what's best for all of us. They're gonna hang us. You think that's right? You ought to steal our stock. That ain't my problem. Tell them vigilantes they're the ones. It's the wrong thing to do. What's right? Hang? Tell me. shot dead by I don't know what and buried in this spot by Coley Bowyer his good friend in April. Coley! <laughs> Setting up in the mines for two days. Spooked near crazy. Would have shot anything on two legs moving, Will. My mind's all unsatisfied with it. I don't know. Seemingly like if Leland had been involved with the event in Weslow, he'd have rode off too, wouldn't he? Like the way you told me coin done. Bring a man and a little person down. That's all even said. Maybe it was a child. Just sitting there getting killed right away. I got no understanding of it at all. I see something! Something's coming! How much would you ask to take me across the Sublicio to Kingsley? I ain't asking. I told you I'd pay you very well. Good point like this, hard to come by. What'd you shoot him for? There ain't a broke or unsound bone in his body. Now you begin to earn your pay. Kingsley? We'll see. Plan to shoot a bit. What if I just up and pull out? Eat the money. Unless I know right here and now what you're after. You're not the only one who knows the way. This is Billy Spear. He'll be going on with it. No, sir, I don't like him. Well, I hope you want to keep that to yourself, Cody. For the reason being that there's a hired gun if ever I seen one. These are the last trees you're going to see for a while. So if you're planning to shoot anything else up, then... Yes, sir. See y'all later, I guess. You want to ride with me, boy? Soon not get left behind here like this. How'd you like the way I done Leland Drum? Like I say. I'll blow it off the first word out. What are you working on him for? He's easier than you. You don't see what I see. Maybe he's the more useful to me. You don't like her much, Will, do you? 
you just try and forget about her, Coley. Because she's got other interests than you. Saying what, Will? Saying I pretty much believe she means to kill someone. <laughs> solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of this state, and that I will discharge the duties of my office with fidelity. I do. If you are ever taken hostage, the official position is you're a dead man. You know, in actuality, the residents can take uh, hostages anytime they want, but they've got the manpower. They outnumber us six to one. You know, I hear these guys talking, and I've heard so many guys say that they've lost their family since they came here. Listen, uh, you're only in here for a year, you know? Then you can go back to teaching and your wife and your kid. It's kind of like a paid vacation. Hey, 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 man, come here. Hey, Jets, come here. What do you got there? You got nothing there. Let me see. I haven't got anything. You got a shank? I have not got a shank. They're Dr. Slocum. Hey, brother. You have a little problem here? Yeah, you got a shank. I don't have all a right, shank. All right, all right. I'll take care of it. I'll beat it. Man, that's a bad scene. It seems to me like something somewhere along the line is not working. You're not going to change anything, Cortland. Half these guys are nuts, anyhow. This is dynamite. Looking for a fuse. Hey, let me clue you into something. Look, Professor, in here you can have... You can have like 3,000 PhDs, don't mean nothing. You mean nothing, you're dogma, just like the rest of these cons. And especially you, you don't know nothing. You know what you're doing, man. It's not gonna end there. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to answer to some people. It's too bad. It could have been a walkthrough. You just had a year. What do you know? There aren't any secrets in here, Paige. It's too bad. And you could have done easy time. is Dublin. This is my cousin Quaxer. He's a man with very special interests. Some men love food, not Quaxer. Some men love liquor, not Quaxer. My cousin, Quaxer Fortune, has a passion for well, let's just say he picks up where others leave off. Fresh manure! Fresh dumb! Excuse me. Hey, do you really sell that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's my job. This is all about Quaxer and what he did to Dublin. Quaxer! Quaxer? Where's Quaxer? That's Quaxer. That's Quaxer. Quaxer, you are No, I got something on my mind and I want to talk to you. Now I listen. I have nothing to say to you, Quaxer. Well, just listen to me. Oh, it was foolish in the first place, the whole thing. I... 
I'm sorry. How do you think of me? Quaxer Fortune found true beauty all over Dublin in small. Neat piles. Submerged for centuries, Atlantis, the lost continent, rises in mythological magnificence. Meet Serena, conceived and spawned in a world beneath the waves. Mermaid majesty, drifting through dreamy depths. Fire in her eyes, love on her lips, desire in her heart. When will you mate? It is your destiny to mate with an outsider, not to love him. Underwater warriors in a savage struggle for survival. I will not sacrifice myself. You will mate! You will mate! Beyond dreams, beyond thought, beyond Atlantis, astounding the imagination, ravishing the senses. The siren of the sea rising through rapture serene. Afloat on waves of pleasure. In a bed of pearls. The ancient army of Atlantis clashing with modern soldiers of science. Atlantis must conquer or die. A primeval princess leads her people from a kingdom beneath the sea to a blazing battleground above. Beyond Atlantis. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. on the land. The night visitor comes to call. When the earth is quiet and the good people of the world are sleeping, the night visitor comes to call. When shadows are secrets too terrible to know, when the sound in your ear is the scream you're too terrified to utter, the night visitor has come to call. That clock doesn't work. Anton's back. It's going to kill me. Salem, the night visitor, a haunting tale of the possible. <laughs> the night visitor will call in your neighborhood soon. Thank <laughs> you.